So we're going to talk today about a couple specialty threads. Um, we're going to talk about wash away thread. Yes, it does wash away and invisible thread, which oddly enough, there are actually two colors of invisible thread. So we'll be talking about that. Um, first thing and most importantly is your bobbin thread. Anytime you are using uh, bobbin thread when you're sewing on your machine, you have whatever you've got in your top back in home ec class, which is what they called it when I was in high school back then, you always matched your top thread and your bottom thread. So your threads were balanced, they were the same weight, they also happen to be the same color, um, but that is um, cause no trouble with your bobbin. You can have a, you can have problems with your sewing machine if your bobbin thread is thicker than your top thread. So back then we always had the same thread. Wind it off the spool, wind it onto the bobbin, everything is great, no trouble. Now they've come out with all kinds of specialty threads, a variety of different sizes, types, all different things, and you never quite know what goes with what. So if in doubt, you want to use bobbin thread in your bobbin. There are different brands. We carry Quilter Select. Um, it is an 80 weight bobbin thread. Um, there's another brand called Bottom Line, which is a nice thread as well. Um, we also carry pre-wound bobbins, uh, Brother Brand, and Class 15 in about 40 different colors. So if you're wanting to match your bobbin thread, that is available. The reason for bobbin thread is it is thin. If you have um, you can get a lot, a lot of thread onto a bobbin, and it won't cause any extra bulk in your bobbin case. It may not be the best description, but that's the issue. It won't cause tension problems. If your bobbin thread is too big, you will have tension problems, you'll have stitch problems. So always be sure that your bobbin thread is equal to or thinner than your top thread. And that's enough bobbin tongue twisters for this morning. I'm going to set those aside. So we are going to have bobbin thread in our bobbin, and we're going to talk about two different things. First, I'm going to talk about invisible thread. Invisible thread, as I mentioned, comes in two colors. It comes in clear, hence invisible, and it comes in smoke. The smoke is actually a see-through, iridescent, kind of a grayish color. When you're stitching with invisible thread, you use the clear invisible on light colors, you use the smoke invisible on dark colors. If you use the clear on dark, you get just a little bit of a sheen. You can see it with your stitches. And if you use the smoke on a light colored thread, you get a little bit of a shadow. It's not real bad, um, but it's there. If you are doing something that is all over, all different colors, pick if your project has more darks, go with this. If your project has more lights, go with that. Stitching with invisible thread is not hard, although we hear horror stories from lots of people. Um, the horror stories come from having old invisible thread. Years ago, invisible thread was like fishing line. It caused all kinds of problems. It was thick as could be. It was tough. Um, it would rip your fabric because it was so much stronger than the fabric. New invisible thread is wonderful. We like the Superior Monopoly. Um, use it with a thread net. When this unwinds, you won't be able to see it because it's invisible. Um, you wind it through your machine just like anything else. But what you want to do is thread nets come with your machine. You just put it right over the top and that will keep the spool from unwinding. It'll give a, just a little bit of tension onto that um, thread as it goes through your machine. So you always want to use a thread net. Otherwise, what happens is it unwraps at the top of your machine and it can get caught around your thread spindle. So you don't want that to happen. The other thing with invisible thread, I mentioned having bobbin thread in. A bobbin thread works great with this. Depending on your project, you can color match your bobbin thread um, or you can just use a white, but you can put um, invisible in your bobbin. I've had a lot of people say, oh, you know, my service tech told me never put invisible in your bobbin. Well, you can. It just is no fun. If it gets caught in there, the techs have no fun trying to get it out because you can't see it. So they like to say you can't use it. Yes, you can use it. There are a couple tricks. When you wind your bobbin, wind your bobbin at half speed. You normally wind your bobbin always at full speed. With invisible, it has a tiny bit of stretch to it. 
So you wind your bobbin at medium speed, and when it's wrapping around the bobbin, it'll wrap fine. If you go at fast speed, what can happen is that thread can get caught in between other threads, and that changes your bobbin tension, and it can cause problems. So always wind invisible at medium speed, and only fill your bobbin three quarters full. Those two tricks will keep you sewing just fine with invisible in your bobbin as well as your top. The only thing to remember is get used to the sound of your machine. And this is with any thread on any project. Know what your machine sounds like. If you hear a clunk clunk or a ch ch or some other funny noise, something is wrong. Stop immediately, take your project out, test it again. Either rethread the top, take out the bobbin and rethread it. You want to be sure that if you hear a noise and something is tangled underneath, you catch it right away. If you don't, Again, that invisible is down in your bobbin case and it's really hard to see. Your tech won't be real happy with you if you have trouble. But if you wind that bobbin medium speed and three quarter full and you listen to your machine and you stop if there's an issue, which there rarely is if you do those two things, you're all set to go. I use invisible thread in quilting a lot. I'm not the world's greatest free motion quilter and I don't like to see my stitches. And a lot of times if I've got a project, say something like this, it's all different colors, and I really don't want to see my stitching, by using an invisible, I don't have to worry about that. So it works great. And about two months ago, I tried it. I had never done it before. I used invisible on my embroidery machine for background quilting, and it worked slick as could be. So invisible is really nice for a lot of different things. The next thing I'm going to talk about sounds funny, yeah, but it's called Vanish Wash Away Thread. It actually washes away. Why would you want it to wash away? You want it to wash away because you're using it for marking or some type of a temporary hold. I went out to their website um, when I was getting ready for this and I thought, oh, I wonder if they have any special tips about their thread. Number one tip. Seriously, it said, do not use when sewing swimwear. <laughs> it really did. Your swimming suit will fall apart. It seems as though that would go without saying, but it actually said don't use on swimwear. So that's my tip for the day. The way the thread is used is it's very thin. You won't be able to see it, but it's very thin and it does wash away. I put regular bobbin weight thread in my bobbin and I put this on the top. You can also use a thread net with this. It does come in large or small spools. And what I'm gonna use this for is marking something. Say I'm gonna make my little whale quilt here, and I have the whale on the front. I really don't need to mark anything. I'm just gonna sew them down. But if I want my whale on the back, I want the front and back to line up. So how do I place him on the front and get his back placed properly so when I stitch around, it holds my top and my back at the same time. What I do is I cut out my whale, I put bobbin <laughs> thread in my bobbin, I put wash away in my top, and I do a running stitch holding down this piece. On the back, you'll see my bobbin thread, and that'll show me right where to place this piece. So I lay him in place, I can use a little 505 spray or I can pin it in place or use a glue stick and I just hold the back in place and then I come back and put in my regular thread and I stitch around to hold my little whale in place. So this is marking the first row of stitches. As soon as I wash my quilt, the top stitching goes away, the bottom, the bobbin thread will just either fall right out or pull right out. On a project like this, the bottom, bo excuse me, bobbin thread is actually under the whale. You won't ever see it. Um, it doesn't come out. Not a problem. So this is great for marking. I also use it for quilt as you go methods. I'm going to talk about that another day. But on blocks like this, I want to, um, excuse me, mark a quarter inch all the way around my blocks because when I put them together, I want to have that quarter inch seam allowance. And I don't want my leaves going outside of my stitch field. I want to know where my stem goes. So as long as my stem is off the edge, beyond my quarter inch marking, I know my stem is gonna be in my seam allowance. 
So I can use it for a lot of different things. <clears throat> when you store um, wash away thread, always keep it in a plastic bag. It comes in a little plastic bag or a little Ziploc bag. It is water soluble. It will wash away completely. So those of you that are used to threading your needle by doing this, don't do that, it melts on your tongue. Um, but um, thread your needle, go ahead and stitch, store it in a Ziploc bag. Here in Wisconsin, when your sewing room is in your lower level, it can get damp. This can start to deteriorate just a little bit in the dampness. If you store it in a plastic bag, it'll be just fine. So